All right, welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green, bringing you brand new interviews right here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, gotta subscribe. We've got a great guest today. I enjoy talking to people that maybe you don't hear from every day. Maybe sometimes even people who would be considered reclusive. I know a lot of my life, I always said, what happened to nasty suicide from Hanoi Rocks? And you hear all kinds of stories. And the most famous that he retired and works in the pharmaceutical industry in Finland. I always thought the most rock and roll name ever is nasty suicide. Hard to believe that he's in Finland working in the pharmaceutical industry, but he continues to play music. He has a brand new album. It's available right now. The link is in the description. It's called the Stenfors Family uh, Album. I wanna make sure I get that right. Stenfors Family Album. And so uh, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the past. We're gonna talk about Hannah Rocks, all of those things and much more right after this. <laughs> All right, I waited a long time to say this. Please welcome Nasty Suicide. Hello, hello. How are you doing, Jason? Good. Before we get started, I got to thank Sammy Yaffa, uh, my friend, for, for putting us in contact. Uh, I, I definitely had to hit him up to do this, so I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, um, I mean, he, I didn't need the persuasion of, of Sammy to do it. it. It's just that, you know things uh, things just happen or, or don't or, you know you get caught up in in uh, so many so many things and especially now this this spring uh when we and the beginning beginning of the summer when we finished off the album or, or the album was coming out and uh yeah and also having having the day job in the pharmaceutical in industry like you said <laughs> yeah well <laughs> uh, i gotta have you a lot to handle that. i gotta have you explain that a little bit but but first the most important question is how is your health because you were dealing with um, prostate cancer and that's the most important thing. So how are you doing? Yeah, I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing okay. I mean, I, I, um, I had a meeting with my oncologist uh, before the summer, I'm on summer vacation now from, from the day job. So uh, he said, yeah, 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 you can, you can uh, go on enjoying the summer. We, we don't see any, anything, uh, I mean, I've had a couple of batches of, of heavy treatment, so one with the chemo, one with radiation, and, and then the hormone treatments and that. And it seems to be doing its job. I mean, it's too early to say whether it will last, but at the moment it's looking good and I'm feeling good. So yeah, and which that's, is, which is that, that's all you have uh, is today. <laughs> Yeah, well, absolutely. And you make the most of today. So uh, that's important because I know a lot of people um, were concerned, but uh, you're a fighter and you're doing the things to, to get better. And hopefully we'll find out soon that, you, you, that you've kicked this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's always a possibility. Uh, every treatment is a, is, a, is a kind of an experiment anyway. So uh, we're all different and all cancers are different. And uh, yeah. You never, you just never know what will happen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I'm glad that you, you gave us an update and uh, and people will be following uh, to make sure that you're back and healthy again. But like you said, you are working through it and busier uh, probably than ever again. The Stenfors Family album is available now. We have that link in the description for people who want to purchase it. And there's different, uh, this variety that you can get it on vinyl, you can get it on CD. So, so streaming, and uh, and then there's also some autographed copies. So this is an interesting. You can even get it on C cassette. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. Yeah, there, there are some copies of that left. <laughs> you you you're missing eight track maybe, right? <laughs> yeah, that's oh damn. Yeah, I have to get, get to the one. company. Yeah, but I mean, I was I was surprised that it actually came out on C cassette. Uh, um, but it's a few. Some people like to, and I I listen to it from on the cassette. You know when it keeps changing the sides by itself, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's great. You know it sounds sounds nice and warm and uh, yeah, sounds like a C cassette. But still, it, it's kind of nostalgia for me. It's nostalgia for me as well. But I bet you there's some people hearing their first cassette. You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Give it a try. See what you think. 
Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about this because this is your family, hence the title family album. A lot of people in this picture. So tell me who's in the, who's in the group. Well, if you start from the left hand side, that's my daughter, Yasmin, uh, sings back in vocals, uh, probably be singing lead vocals uh, in, in the future. Uh, and then there's my little brother, Frey, plays the drums. Uh, my nephew, Jonathan, plays guitar and actually produced the whole album. He's, he's the one of the lot of us, us uh, that has had some kind of a training in, in music. He is actually in training in music technology. So he, he uh, recorded and, and produced the whole album. Then that's me, of course, uh, uh, right in the middle of my chemo. So <laughs> I didn't have any hair. Uh, yeah. So that, that affects uh, the looks a little bit when you have no eyebrows and hair. It, 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 you uh, always wore a hat well, though. Yeah. <laughs> True. So, yeah. And then there's my dad, Harry Stanfors, who's kind of given us, uh, the family, the whole culture. He's an old jazz jazz player. I also has, has an uh, you know academic career of his own, so I kind of go in his footsteps a lot. Then there's my wife, uh, Minna, uh, who plays plays keys and sings back in vocals. And then Carla, who's uh, Frey, you know, the drummer's daughter, sings back in vocals. And then Nisa, Niels, uh, right on the, on the right-hand side, plays bass and, and vocals. Has yeah. the most bluesy sound of all, all of us in, in his vocals. Um, so it's, so we ha actually have, we have we have three lead singers in the band, which is kind of a uh, peculiar peculiarity as well. On top of all of us being being uh, uh, all of our last names are, is Stanford, so that's kind of uh, two things that make makes the band special. Yeah, and you mentioned the blues. This is sort of a blues rock um, based album for the most part it, it definitely has variety and it's different than i think anything that you've done before i think so i mean it, it's got some aspects of uh, maybe the cheap and nasty days uh, but uh, probably very little from the hanoi days i mean that was a long time ago and obviously uh, i've aged a little bit since then <laughs> uh but uh yeah the bluesy thing has always been there and me and my brothers we played played the uh, kind of blues rock before before the hanoi days so it's kind of but going back to back to those roots back to the roots yeah and uh i've got to ask you um some of the younger people like your daughter what do they think of you being nasty suicide <laughs> well my my daughter kind of grew up with it she didn't realized there was anything to it until you know i can't remember what grade but people started asking her is is your dad nasty suicide <laughs> is, who uh uh yeah you know, from hanoi rocks but well, who are they and uh, you know it slowly but surely it started then it started dropping a little further and uh, uh yeah, and then she asked me that you in some were you in in this band and and then she realized well yeah yeah she has heard some talk about it at home it wasn't a big big number anyway at home so uh, and but now my I have two more daughters I have a, a seven year old and a two year old and the seven year old now starts asking me you know what, what's what's this thing my my pals are asking me about some guy now called nasty suicide. Yeah, I mean, it, they know me, and obviously they they realize that's that's just a name I've gone by, and it's an artist name, and uh, uh, yeah, a character uh, you could say. Yeah, uh, it's safe to say that. Uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, they they I think they they get that point pretty pretty you, pretty quickly. You, yeah, you have to know that your fans are getting younger. That people, kids and teenagers and young adults are discovering Hanoi rocks. It's this, it's this resurgence again. Yeah, yeah. What we're we gonna do with that? I don't know. But, well, uh, nasty. You're walking right into the question that I was gonna say for last. But I've got to tell you, I've had uh, Sammy Alpha on this show, and then I just interviewed Andy McCoy uh, the other day. Really? 
okay. which, was which was interesting. Um, uh, and I asked, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and I made the point uh, that you, Michael Monroe, and Sammy uh, have all performed together several times recently. The audience loves it. People are so excited. I'm fortunate that here in America, we at least get to watch it on YouTube um, to see it. And so that's three of the core members of Hanoi Rocks. Um, so the question uh, that I asked both of them is, is there a chance that we would see all four of you on stage uh, again? Now, Andy says that he is open to it, but that he would want it to be all five. I'm assuming he means Jip Casino um, as mm -hmm. well. So. He says, yeah. never say never, he would be open to it. Sammy, in my first interview, said, never say never, who knows. The second interview, he wasn't as confident, but he said that, that it wouldn't be money-based, but if everybody could get along, it's a possibility. So how do you mm. feel? You've been the quietest of the members, I feel. Mm. Yeah, I'm the quietest, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh probably on the one with the most issues uh, at the moment i mean obviously playing with mike or sammy or with jip uh, is no problem but uh but but you know i i don't know if i yeah i don't know what to say to that really it's, it's, it, it, i understand it's a tricky question because it seems like there's a lot of personal things also that get in the way there is there is a lot of personal things yeah it's, it's all personal now <laughs> and uh, uh, it, otherwise we probably would have done done a lot of things with um uh, with andy for instance I mean, I mean there's been talk about suicide twins gigs or, or whatever actually that usually is is the the case when when it surfaces that me and andy should play together is suicide twins uh hanoi has usually been decked by michael uh sammy's always kind of open there was uh, yeah a point when when sammy was uh, you know strict no no to that so it, it's been personal for all of us um we take turns who's 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 most most fallen out with with andy at the moment and i guess i i have been for the past few years uh, I keep my distance. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's difficult for me to say what, what happens, it, but uh, yeah, we'll see. And at one time, I would say you and Andy were probably the closest. Obviously, as we said, after Hanoi, you continued in Suicide Twins 1986. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess after Hanoi, when Hanoi broke up, uh, nobody was getting along except me and Andy, I guess. Uh, and we we got along the same as we'd done before and went on and obviously we'd we've been changing as as people and we we were distancing us ourselves from from the world in general with our you know habits and things uh so but we carried on playing together we had the suicide twins we had the cherry bombs and uh until that came to an end that, that became too much as well i think it was on the suicide twins tour i told him no i i have to stop i can't take any of this anymore like live living in living in a in a kind of rock and roll documentary all the time is is not what i <laughs> <Yeah>. want to do <laughs> talking to I, him I, is I really live, different. Yeah. sorry yeah Talking to Andy is very different than talking to you or Sammy, I will say. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, I, I like to, when I'm on stage, that's that's rock and roll. And off stage, it, it might be a little bit, a little bit rock and roll before and after. But apart from that, I want to live a normal life. I want to be a normal guy. Uh, you know, I want to see my kids. I want to understand my kids. I want them to understand me, not the sense of drooling. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. being uh, so um yeah you know what i mean i do uh i i, but I know this is an interview so i have to, <laughs> I have to say it. 
Well, I'm using maybe it's my maybe I'm being selfish using my platform to sort of talk to the members and see if there's a possibility. My I'm from New York City. My favorite band of all time was the Ramones, and uh, none of them are here anymore. None of the original four are here anymore. So when you think about um, the four of you and Jip, the five of you being you know alive, uh, that maybe there is this possibility one day, and because. Uh, again, we're selfish, but people really love this band that they never got a chance to see. And that's one of the mm. things that I think people, the influence of Hell I Rocks is always discussed. Every band that appears on my show has been influenced by Hell I Rocks in one way um, or another. And, but the time was so short, you know, for you guys, you were so young when you began. And, um, and, and 1984, I find to be, it, the highest and the lowest year of all, because the two steps from the move record, you know, it's recorded in, in March, up around the bed comes out in, I believe, June. The record comes out in August. Things are moving um, so fast. I want to point out also in that year a record called Fallen Angels, which I consider to be one of the great lost uh, punk records. Here it is now. Um, this is a this is like. Lost Hanoi Rocks, Lost Vibrators. Most people don't know about this. You can find it online, but uh, it's you, Razzle, Sammy, Knox from the Vibrators, and Michael and Andy guest on this as well. Tell me a little right. bit how you fit this in that busy year. Uh, sorry, about the busy year or, or about Fallen Angels? Yeah, how you had the time, because this comes out in 84 uh, as well. Yeah. I... I'm not sure. I think we had a break in, in the gigging and uh, Knox, we were managed by the same guy. I mean, uh, Richard Bishop managed both us and, and Knox and the Vibrate. I don't know if he, he actually, I think he just managed, managed Knox, not the Vibrators. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, he wasn't in the Vibrators at the time. They weren't doing anything. That, that's my, that's how I remember it. So he wanted to do a solo album and he was talking to Richard, you know, where, where am I going to get a band? And uh, Richard was like, well, what about those three guys sitting on the sofa there? You know, I mean, they 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 got nothing to do. They got nothing better to do than to, you know, drink, drink up my fridge and uh, smoke whatever I have. And whatever. <laughs> so, he, you know, he was. He was getting a bit worried about us, and every time we, when they, when the band was kind of idle, we weren't gigging or weren't recording, everyone started going, you know, getting bored and and going a bit nuts, and we just sat there, like a, the, the, I, I don't know, the three stooges, but, but uh, you know, the, like, you know, uh, so so it was a, it was a better idea to get us into the studio, and and Nox thought, well, yeah, you know. There we have it, you know, a uh, second guitar and uh, bass and drums and, and uh, nice characters. And we, we never got, got on to play any gigs, I don't think, uh, because when, when uh, Fallen Angels did play gigs, though, uh, there was my mate Matt Kellett played with them. And uh, I don't think we ever played a, a gig. That would have been really interesting. But... Yeah, I but think it was, so. uh, it was Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I was saying, I think Sammy said as well that there was really no gigs because it happened so fast. That band then continued. But um, like yeah. I said, though, it is one of these lost records that I recommend uh, people check out. Uh, and speaking of, of, I'm jumping around, but speaking of lost records, I'll be in, I would be in trouble if I didn't get Michelle's question. And she asked me to find out if the Cheap and Nasty records will ever be streamed digitally because here they're all, she says she's get tired of hearing them on YouTube. The quality on YouTube's not mm. good enough. Is there any chance of these coming out uh, streaming? Uh, it, probably with, with it is that uh, I, I haven't found out exactly how to get on with it. Uh, uh, but the, the companies that, or at, at least the first company we did, we did a, the first album on China Records, that was bought up by Polydor, I think. And then now the, the masters are owned by Warner. And what I've heard is that, it, it, you know, getting anything out of Warner uh, is, you know, these kind of lost tapes is, is, a, 
it's wasted energy that that yeah. it's just not going to happen i don't know i i wouldn't know who to who to contact at the moment uh then the other one the next one is that was done for a japanese company uh, pony canyon and um so th there's been some contact the same record label the small record label that put put out the stand force album they contacted pony canyon uh whether they could license the tapes or license it for finland i don't know if that would be a kind of a opening if, if that that got going and and it was kind of available if, or if we could then negotiate further but uh, if that i haven't heard anything from that but that they were certainly interested in, in doing something with it. Uh, it's a, such a long time ago that I don't know actually legally who owns the masters. I, I think whether that it might be even the band, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether yeah, we might own, own them. It might have reverted back to you. You might own it. Yeah, yeah. we're going to do some. Yeah. We're going to do some research. We're going to do some research on that. Yeah, um, get on, get on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm all, I'm gonna get on it. I'm gonna try to get you guys back together, and I'm gonna try to uh, uh, find out how we license this. Uh, yeah. That year, 1984, the Up Around the Bend video. When I was younger and I was watching MTV, that video was playing as if you guys were a new band, but the band has already was already broken up. But they were playing and featuring it. That video was one of the most uh, big budget music videos, uh, and it's it's crazy. And the, one of the most famous scenes in the video happens to be you on a zip line. Uh, yeah, how yeah. Did that happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how did that happen? I think it was meant to, uh, they'd organized for Andy to jump off the roof, and uh, but he, he didn't want to do it. Uh, so um, I, I think he got some kind of an anxiety attack. Uh, and then, then he said, "Well, you know, we're going to send N Nasty up there. He, he, he can jump. I'm not going to do it." So I went up there, and Richard, our band manager, came up with me, uh, kind of to calm me down or to give, yeah, calm me down one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I put this harness on me, and there was a line that some some stunt man had, had kind of tried out they they figured maybe maybe we weigh about the same and uh but then we didn't calculate in that uh, on top of my body weight we add a few kilos of the guitar i had a heavy less ball on me mm -hmm. so uh, i jump off and it, it it came down a little bit too low and i'm i'm like flying towards the stage with and it spun, uh, spun around so i'm flying with my back first and it, luckily it spun spun uh, so far that i could get my feet up and uh before i smashed into the side of the stage uh at least yeah it felt like i, I was moving pretty fast i don't know if it looks like i'm, I'm coming down that fast but but uh it felt like uh, something could have gone wrong wrong there if you know if i didn't get my time. feet up did you do it just once? Actually, uh, no, no, it was twice. I had to do it twice because the first first one, I I was stuck hanging by the by the at the rooftop uh, because Richard was actually standing on a line that was hanging from my harness. So it was it, it stopped. I, I you know moved about one meter and then I I stopped there. Luckily, they, they got me down and then yeah, you have to go right back up and and do it again. So yeah, so I did it twice and made a rock and roll history could you imagine the finnish uh, headlines nasty suicide dies in zipline accident <laughs> yeah no, no no one would have believed that one uh, we're, but, uh, we're lucky uh we're lucky that you you made it and again that that is the memorable uh well there's a lot of memorable scenes in that video but uh, uh people certainly uh love it so um as we know you guys Toward for that record, uh, Michael Monroe broke his foot and you took some time off. Um, now, I ask you these questions because you've said writing a book does not interest you. The other guys have yeah. written books. You said, you I think you're not really as much into living in the past. So I appreciate you uh, talking about the past a little bit with us here today. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I think 
if if I was to write a book, it would be about what's inside here. It wouldn't be about what what the, I think people want to hear. Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think I want to I want to write a book about what I think and what 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 I see, and um, uh, that's what it should be about. If it was a biography, or if it was. And not about what what I think people want to hear. What what might be the most rock and roll thing to write? Uh, so, yeah, I've decided so far not to do it. Yeah, and uh, I I understand. Some uh, I think you'd like to let the music uh, do the talking, uh, so to speak. Yeah, um, I, the rock and roll stuff is is on stage and on record, and uh, yeah, so otherwise uh, I'm gonna <laughs> want to live a normal life, and yeah, you know, and that's. I don't know. Is that worth writing about? It maybe it is actually, but but I don't. I'm not sure if that's what people want to read about. Yeah, or well, I think people. I think you have a story that people would like to hear. Like you've said, maybe it's not so much about throwing televisions out the window uh, uh, anymore. There's other stories and things that go to it. Um, so we, I, when I was talking to Andy, we were talking a little bit about. Uh, you know, Motley Crue has the uh, movies and books where they sensationalize moments and maybe things that didn't happen, including um, the, the tragedy involving Razzle, uh, that there was this big party going on that night. And uh, Andy and Sammy have both told that story, that there was only six people there um, the night that this tragedy occurred. Where were you when it happened? I was... Uh... At the hotel, I stayed. Uh, I stayed in the room. I mean, I think they left pretty much. Uh, the Razzle left. We, we shared the room, and um, we. When I got into our room, he left the room and said, "There's a bottle of wine that left. So help yourself. Have it. I, I, I don't need it. I'm going to go over to Vince Neil's house and uh, you know, for a party. I'm not. Yeah. So." Uh, I just decided to stay stay behind or stay at the hotel. At some point, I went to the manager's room. One of them, we had two at that point. So either Seppo or Richard, uh, you know, it was one of their rooms. Uh, and uh, I think there, you know, I just sat there when when the phone call came from the hospital that there's there's been an accident and uh, and uh, yeah. A bit hazy, but uh, yeah, just at the hotel, hanging out. Did, yeah. Did you know when they called that he'd passed away, or did you not find out until later? Not at that point. No, uh, I knew there was an accident, and uh, they said we should come to the to the hospital. And uh, it was only when we came to the hospital that we we were told that that he he passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh... A, a, a tragedy, obviously, that's been talked about, but I don't. I think this is the first time that anyone's heard um, your recollection of it. You know, because you weren't there with with the guys when it happened, and uh, and a sad moment in history. And also, I, I always point out for the other two young people who were paralyzed um, in this uh, this tragic event as as well. Um, so this ends Hanoi Rocks. I know you do try to continue for a while. Sammy has told me that him and Razzle were both on the fence about staying um, anyway. I know there was disagreements. You did do two more shows um, with Terry Chimes. And then at that point, you guys, you continued. I mean, you really were cranking out the rock and roll. Uh, as we said, Suicide Twins 86. Cherry Bombs has two EPs, one live record. Um, Cheap and Nasty. And that was, was about four years of that, uh, you, I think you did Demolition Twenty Three, also, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, that, that's where where Cheap and Nasty ended, actually, at that point. Yeah. And were were you living in the states at that, when that was happening? Uh, Cheap and Nasty. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was doing. I was putting together a lot, lot of groups after after we uh, fin we were finished with the with the Cherry Bombs and the Suicide Twins. Andy left to the States. He, he, he went to LA and and I was I was I still stayed on in in, um, in London. I was married in, in, in England 
at that point and uh, i just stayed there and, and got a few few outfits together we had things called the soho vultures and the, the weird things and whatever i mean there, there, were, there were a lot of <laughs> yeah lo lots of funny things we, we did but but then none of them lasted for long i mean they're, they're all good good in their own way and and people from those days they all remember them with, with warmth that <laughs> they they were fun fun bands and they usually played a couple of gigs and that was it and then, then we moved on and did did something else so I got kind of tired with not getting something proper together and uh, moved to LA myself. I, I didn't move to LA at that point. I went there with a, with a tourist visa for six months and you know, shacked up with my my mate, uh, Timo Kaltio. Uh, I was uh, allowed to stay. No, hang on. Yeah, I did stay at his place as well, but it was mostly at Sammy's place, I think, with, with Jet Boy. Jet, uh, you know that band right they had a they had a, a place i think franklin avenue and we you know they let me stay there they were off on tour actually so i stayed there taking care of of, of the place <laughs> taking care of the place. yeah and uh, uh, but we me and timo we decided straight away that we, we're gonna get something together here and uh uh then we got less rigs to play drums and and mike finn from the unforgiven he, he joined on bass and that was really really good lineup and um so we played play, played quite a few shows in the california area i don't think we played out, outside of california but uh th there was a lot of small clubs to do and quite a quite a good scene and uh, so uh, we got going quite well and but then six months was over before before i knew it and i had to go back to renew my visa or, or plan how to how to re-enter uh but when i came back they they realized that well you you've been here before you've just been here for six months what were you what are you doing here i, said, ah, I just love your country it's uh, it's beautiful you know <laughs> So they look at my past person. Well, in the in the past, you've had uh, working visas, and uh, what are you doing? Are you working here? You're, you're playing here, right? And uh, so they, at the same time, the other officer went through my bags and and with all, found all my my contacts and uh, call, was calling around LA. Do you know this person? And some of them said yes, and some of them said no, never heard. Uh, I think he was some some people said yeah yeah let him through he's got gigs booked we, we need him here <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was it then uh they put me put me in jail for the night and uh then then on on the first possible plane the next day yeah back we, to england so yeah uh, have so, you been uh, in america since um uh, i have a couple of times yeah yeah okay. but it's always a, a, a hell of a hassle uh, I still need need a visa. Nobody else from Europe needs a visa, but but I do. <laughs> uh, they remember that if you if you lied to the American government or the the, the border officials, then they never forget. Yeah, well, an obviously Andy McCoy had his share of visa problems uh, as well. He wouldn't exactly tell me what happened in the interview, <laughs> but he he has dates. If he remembered, he might. <laughs> He might yeah. not. He ha uh, he has dates booked in December here. Well, we'll, we'll see if those happen. It, it'd be nice if it. If, That's if it right. I, I saw somewhere whiskey a go go or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he's doing uh, two shows there, and it'll be the first time that he's been in um, the country in decades. So these visa issues, and Sammy says as well with, with Michael Monroe that it doesn't. It's not worth it to go to all the hassle to come and play these. Uh, you know a few small shows because it is a difficult to come from finland that's why i'm yeah, planning yeah. my finnish vacation soon because it seems like it's the only way i'm going to get to see you guys <laughs> yep that's what you have to do but uh yeah it's it believe me for, for for years so um you do make your solo record uh and i, I would say this is sort of the this is sort of towards the end of your 
public life because at this point you go back and so like I said in the intro for all these years I, I heard that you were a pharmacist I just assumed you're working in the drugstore and I'm telling my friends I think you can just go to Finland and say hello to nasty suicide you know at your local uh, uh, you know CVS or Walgreens are probably different names there uh, yeah they they're, yeah yeah they're, they're much more kind of uh government controlled pharmacies over here so it, 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 there's um kind of a farm pharmacy with i guess it's kind of a monopoly yeah i mean the, the government uh decides how many pharmacies a certain area can have and then gives out licenses to people like me who, who, who can then uh, take over that pharmacy and, and start doing a business but then that business is is their own. Uh, it's, it's not government owned, but it's government governed, regulated. Yeah. <laughs> regulated. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to ask the obvious question: How does nasty suicide get into the pharmacy industry? Oh, easy. But my experience, <laughs> no. Um, uh, I I decided at some point. I mean, I was playing in a lot of bands and. Uh, yeah, we had we had cheap and nasty, which was great. I loved the guys, I loved the music, uh, but we didn't get there's something. It's it's, it's fucking hard work, uh, you know, get, keeping a band together and keeping it on the way up. And I think you need, I guess, luck as well. But I don't know. The luck will come if the band is interested, is interesting enough. Uh, then at some point, the right person or the right instance will get interested and things will start falling falling uh, together but but uh, I, I got tired of waiting for it again uh, and uh, Leslie, let me let me interrupt you on a side note so you went going back you're in los angeles and you're seeing all these bands getting signed a lot of them would be accused of copying your image your style and the band as well is it frustrating to see all these uh hanoi rocks sort of imposters while you're struggling with your own band? Uh, uh, not frustrating, no, no. And I wouldn't really call them Hanoi Rocks imposters either. I mean, I, I didn't, I haven't seen their bands from the inside, but I, I'm, uh, obviously I knew some of them. Uh, Izzy from Guns N' Roses, I knew pretty well. So I got some kind of an inside uh, view there. I know also some of the LA bands, obviously Jet Boy and uh, and and like like Jet Boy, not not all of them went to great fame, and, not, and but but some of them did. And whatever made made things fall fall into place for them in another way. Whatever makes a band interesting, it's it's uh, yeah, it's not up to me to 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 decide that not, that, some, that somebody doesn't uh, deserve it. Uh, because I think they do, they all do. But uh, I, I don't know what makes it, what makes a band successful. What be, what makes a song a hit? Uh, you know, it's, it's just one of these things that 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 happen or it it doesn't. And I got tired of waiting for for it not to happen. Or uh, and then on I don't know. On the other hand, I was maybe also a little bit because I ended up being the lead singer myself. And uh, in a way, that wasn't what I was looking for. But I didn't see, uh, I didn't find another way. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want a regular singer. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, a regular rock singer is, is not something that you find find anywhere you go either. I mean, somebody with a real personal good voice and presence, and you know. So uh, yeah. So I ended up doing it myself, and I wasn't really, really, uh, yeah. It wasn't really in my in my mind the optimal way of doing it. Yeah. Uh, so, Although a lot of people love that music and love you fronting uh, the band as well, but maybe it didn't yeah. fit into that time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But uh, there was there was something that that bugged me about it, and uh, so then when when i was kind of got frustrated enough and i was walking past this university every day the where, where i could see that you could study physiology 
and it started looking better and better. I thought, oh, imagine if you know if you had a, a degree in physiology and you could sort of whatever. It, it would just life would be so interesting. And uh, and then uh, Sammy or Mike, one of them called me up and said, look, we got this band together called Demolition Twenty Three. We're gonna uh, come to UK and then we're gonna go to Japan and Scandinavia. Uh, our guitar player can't come. He can't come with us because he he he's got the the opposite problem. He couldn't come. He couldn't leave the states. Uh, I couldn't enter the states. So he said, "Yeah, if, if I if I join them, then then we could you know kind of have a big part of the old pals together at the same time as you know playing some kick-ass rock and roll and uh, and they can they can you know." do their, their tours. So I thought, well, this is maybe, you know, and, and there was obviously Mike, the the dream front man of every band. Yeah. I didn't have to do the front thing. I could just play guitar, I do do what I like doing. Uh, so yeah, I, I jumped on their wagon and uh, then left Cheap and Nasty kind of quickly. And it was it was a bit bit of a bad thing. Uh, it wasn't wasn't that nice to to just leave like that. And uh, when they they all had big hopes and big plans, and something was was in the plans to, to be happening in, in in Europe as well. So kind of bad timing, but kind of you know the the phone call from Mike and Sammy was was kind of perfect timing. So. Yeah, that would be the last time the four of you played together. To my knowledge, Andy did come to a show and 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 jam, and I uh, I think that's yeah. the last time. That's right. Yeah, that, yeah. I think that's the last time that that uh, happened. So, okay, you're 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 talking about going back to school, which is uh, which is wild. So, tell me, how long did you go to school for? Well, I had to do high school first, so that was three years. And then, uh, then five years of university. Incredible. So, eight, eight years, and then a few more years. Uh, I did at the at the university. I, you know, thinking about doing a PhD. So about ten years, all in all. You know, I left the PhD thing when I got offered some money from from a pharmaceutical company. I, I realized, well, this is the shit. You know, I, I need. I need a, a monthly wage, you know, that's, you know, that you can, and then, then obviously as years go on, you realize that no monthly wage is enough. <laughs> it's, it all goes or comes. So. Yeah. And you found, and you found your, yeah, you found your thing. You, you worked that far and you found something that works for you, but you were working with people, right? Uh, with people. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, like you were in an office, you pe yeah, and, and and before that, I, I did actually on the side. I, I worked in a pharmacy as well, so I, I kind of I did the what were you said in in Woolworths or where, wherever you have your pharmacies. That's an old one. Yeah, yeah. So um, so I I did that as well. Uh, and you know, I mean that was great because you. You you get to be a bit of a you know wanna be a doctor there as well. You you have your pharmacy degree. You know about the medicines. You know about the medicaments or whatever things at the pharmacy. Uh, but you you get to kind of solve people's problems or try to help them solve whatever they have. And that was really really good. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's a good thing when it works. Is it a true story that somebody came in with an infected Hanoi Rocks tattoo? <laughs> I can't remember that. Maybe. Yeah, it's, it's not an impossibility. But... I, yeah, I think I got the story from Sammy that uh, that while working Sammy's... at the pharmacy. Yes, <laughs> Sammy's somebody... got a great, mem get great memory for stories, but he also has a very vivid imagination. That, that kind of, you never know which, which is it. <laughs> but if, if if that's what makes Sammy me... so great. If he created that one, it's good. You know, it's a. It, yeah. it's, it would be. A yeah, I mean, Sammy has a has a way of kind of coloring up 
uh, stories. I, I was working in a pharmacy that was was next to the where the vets study to be a vet become vets, and you have these young vet candidates that that you know not quite quite yet there, but they have to do all kinds of all kinds of stuff before they get their you know marks. And uh, so I was at the pharmacy where, where they told me a lot of stuff. They would they would talk about uh, well whatever put in long gloves and, and put in the, their hands into cows and or, or, or uh, hacking the hacking a foal to pieces in in the womb of a horse or whatever so i i think i told some of this to sammy and uh, a few years went past and then he he we played together uh maybe after 10 years we, we played at a festival in finland i, I went, went with them with with the michael monroe band and then in the bus he he started telling me about and uh, how he's been telling people uh about me with with my hand up a <laughs> cows behind and uh all the, all the things i've done in my job <laughs> so he, he yeah he kind of colors things up a little bit himself but you know whatever if, if, if they keep talking about me what am I, who am i to complain i, I listen i'm nasty i'm gonna believe the story and maybe not the cow one but that some kid had an infected <laughs> hanoi rock tattoo and he had to come in to go to nasty suicide to get uh to get some medicine for it I, i'm gonna believe it uh, it's the uh, yeah. let's believe that one yeah sure yeah, right. We're gonna go. We're gonna go with it. But were people recognizing you? Hannah Rocks is the biggest rock band to come out of Finland. You know, uh, obviously you guys are legends. Even though, you know, people know you. But were do people come? Were people recognizing you? Sorry, sorry. What was that? Were people recognizing you for for, for being nasty suicide at the pharmacy? Uh, no, not really, actually. Uh, not at that point. Uh, th that was kind of a, a point when when nobody recognized me really. Uh, sometimes, yeah, but not not in a way that they would recognize uh, Michael or or Andy. So I I was uh, I was left in peace pretty much. Uh, it's only lately, not even now. I mean, because when I when I walk around the stores or, or whatever, if, even if I go to the bar. Or something and um, I look I look pretty much like everyone else but you can't say that about Michael or Andy right uh, even even Sammy is uh, you know lo looks like an artist when he walks in but uh, me I could be just anybody I think as the internet got bigger and the, the audience got younger and now we people have seen you performing uh, I think maybe now it's become more of a now they they remember oh nasty suicide and maybe for a little mm -hmm. while you had a little anonymity. It seemed like that that's what you wanted though. I, I've always got the impression that you were okay being a little bit reclusive. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I never liked uh, like being famous outside of the stage or you know. Obviously, it's uh, you know flattering in some way, but. <laughs> but if you look from a tour bus, you, you, you wave at people. That, that's quite, you know, that's nice. But when it becomes too close, then it's a, yeah, um, a lot of the ni nice nicety goes away and, and becomes a little bit, a little bit kind of, uh, uh, yeah, comes too close. You, you, you spoke of your friendship with Izzy Stradlin. And obviously, he you had influence on him as well. And there's a similarity also that he is another person who is able to walk away and is fine not being seen. And uh, there's a lot in common with you guys. Yeah, yeah, probably you're right. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, with um, yeah in the Hanoi gang as well, me and Sammy and and Brazil, we would hang out a lot together. Obviously, Razzle is is quite and and Sammy as well. They're, they're very outgoing in their own way, but uh, they like to you know have their own. They they wanted to have their own kind of crowd that uh, around them, and uh, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think Izzy probably is uh, in a way in 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 his uh, character is is nature. 
fairly close to mine. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like uh, you follow in your footsteps a, a little bit. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, obviously, it's, it's, it's worked for both of you. And you guys have left some uh, great no, music. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a great, great artist. And, uh, and that, yeah, I'm, I'm sure a very big influence within Guns N' Roses, why they became what they became was, was because of uh because of Izzy's uh, uh perception you know wh wh where they should be going what they should be doing yeah a a and then obviously his songwriting uh yeah well, you know a, a, a big contribution so you spent those years sort of um reclusive you would occasionally jam with michael um but th and then you would go back to normal life did you feel like at some point the fire was burning? I got to get out there again and make some music. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and that's probably why I'm I'm doing this now as well. I mean, I've been all the time thinking how what what is it I want to do, I and mean, how how can I have my musical outlet, uh, my rock and roll outlet, and uh, in the end, of of course, I've done these guesting things whenever whenever Michael needed a stand-in guitar player because his bands was you know everyone was uh, placed all over the globe so every now and again one of the guitar players couldn't make it and so so he could call me up and especially i'm in the gigs in finland and not i haven't played with them anywhere else i don't think or maybe in sweden i'm not sure no but i think only the finish and especially in the summer in the festival season that's something you can't say no to because there's a uh, there's tons of festivals in Finland in the summer and and they all want Michael Monroe, so um, that, that 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 just has to be done. Obviously now they've been out touring with Alice Cooper and Guns N' Roses, so it's a bit of a different summer for them. And if if they need to stand in there, it, it's probably a bit bit too much uh, to kind of fly me over. And uh, but but they maybe they have some some other connections out there. To help yeah. them out in in the, in such a case, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's a not a not a bad not a bad gig. Um, so yeah, so we're talking about it because the Stenfors family album comes about, and uh, and it's great that you keep your music in the family uh, and that everybody gets to be involved. This has got to be uh, a, a, a satisfying thing. Yeah, I mean that, that's the thing I was coming to when uh, when I was thinking about how can I do it so that I feel comfortable with it and I feel motivated, uh, uh, you know, so that it's special enough and and also it's not because on the other hand I wanted before I had this thing I wanted to study and whatever but now more and more I want to get to know my family again you know my brothers and and uh, their children and. Uh, obviously my dad so i wanted to be close i wanted to have a close family again <laughs> i also wanted to have a band but uh, you know why didn't i think of uh, trying to bring it all together into a family band and uh, now we've done it so i mean and it obviously it helps when when uh, jonathan uh, nissa's son uh, has studied all the technology and he could take care of this was during the corona times so of of course when we start working on on this album so but us being family it, it didn't seem so we didn't seem so contagious <laughs> as other people so we could get into the studio and we could work work together and and uh, yeah it worked out fine and, and it was really it's really good good fun and we always thought between us brothers and now between actually every family member that we have a special obviously we have a connection but we have a special connection in you know we have, we have a really good time together mm -hmm. and and now we can also do that playing music so i uh it's a win-win for me i can imagine and you and you are playing live obviously the shows are in finland right now uh, but people yeah. can come to you and there's clips, you know, we're, we're fortunate that we have these things like YouTube because uh, yeah, I'm it. here in Las Vegas right now uh, uh, to, to say a million miles away, it would be fitting. Uh, but you guys, uh, we get to see some of this music and, and sharing it with you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's worked out 
uh, nicely and in a way uh, i think the, the covid time hasn't been good for everybody but in a way it's been good for this band because we had a had a chance to to do it i mean i, I couldn't really travel around with my my pharmacy or my, my pharma job so i was i was around a lot more and i was able to to do this stuff with with the, the other family members and yeah it, it's all worked out and now now we just have to carry on from from here yeah and uh again everything you can uh we have the links to go to the website you can find it's available in obviously uh, finland but also there's uh, english options as well and it's streaming for people who can't get a hold of the physical that's the great thing about music now it is a uh, it's accessible yeah that's right that's right but but it's, it's actually a great thing coming back to but i don't know how vinyl is in the states uh, i've heard it's not such a big thing as it is in oh, it's, no it's big it's it's big again with young people i thought vinyl say 93 i thought vinyl would never come back i thought it was over and uh i can't tell you how many younger friends i have who are collecting Hanoi Rocks and, and the other bands on vinyl. So it, it's it's definitely a big resurgence here. Yeah, I mean, it, it is, uh, especially if you have record covers and you got, you, you want to see faces on the cover, you want to, you know, proper size uh, thing. I mean, yeah, uh, it, it's, it has its, its good size, definitely. I mean, we, We've kind of gone back to that in Finland a lot. I don't have a vinyl player yet, but I'm, I'm planning for it all the time. But it, it is kind of a nice thing when you put the needle on there, you watch it, you know, create the sound out of the vinyl into the needle and, the, you know, into the into the machinery and in, uh, out of the speakers. I mean, it, it's a, it is a different thing than, than listening to a CD, but obviously I, I realized that it's not, not everybody thinks it's, it's better quality. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, that is one of the, the debates, but there are people, and I think some people also are collectors, you know, like you said, they like to see it and see the notes yeah, but, and- Yeah, and, and then who cares about quality? I, I realized that when I, when I put in the C cassette, it was great you know I, I thought it's gonna sound tiny but no 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 it doesn't sound tiny it sounds nice and warm obviously if you start measuring it then there must be some frequencies that you can't hear or something but uh it works great on yeah. on seek and 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 on vinyl obviously on on cd as well it, it's always a little bit crispier somehow but yeah i mean they're, they're all all got the they're good good points good size and Good thing is that people can choose what they like. Yeah, and that's that's the best thing. You have all these options and that we can get music and we can get music fast. I know it's early to say plans, but do you think maybe another record down the road with the family? Yeah, definitely. Uh, hard to say how quickly because, yeah, we like to take our time, which is a good thing. We like to give a song time to mature. Uh, Obviously, there's some songs like on the album, Chemo Brain was written there and then, and uh, I, I wrote the songs when and, oh, I wrote the lyrics when I when I had the chemo. Uh, so, and uh, so they, that can happen too. But but uh, usually usually the more epic songs, they you have to give them time to mature and and and, and uh, yeah in every way you know you you come up with things you can do with it or something you take out or whatever uh, you, you you need to uh, at least i need to take my time with with a song once it's been chosen that this is a great song but the, you know it, it's not I, I i yeah i'm not one of those that, that then sit in the studio for 24 hours and and really constantly do something uh with it it, it doesn't happen like that i would yeah, I would let it mature over six months instead. Does everybody live close so it's easy to get together? Yeah, we live close enough. Yeah, yeah. Not too close so we don't get on each other's nerves, but we live close enough so that we, we can, uh, yeah. We're not you like guys, Michael's band, that's for sure. Right. You guys got to get on the tour bus one day. You'd be like the here in America, it'd be the Partridge family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. We're gonna try give that a go in the autumn. We have uh, 
this promoter that's that's selling us now and we'll, we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah well there's a lot to uh, there's a lot to look forward to i thank you so much for joining me when i began this show you said things that came out of the pandemic that were good i did this as a way to entertain people uh and get to talk about music and things other than the news and uh I, one of the guests i wanted the most was you i said i gotta have nasty suicide on and here we are so i i'm extremely grateful for your time and the music that you've uh given us thank you jason it's been a pleasure and, and it, yeah it's been a pleasure just like sammy said it will be <laughs> and uh thank you and thanks sammy for yes, putting thank us, you. hooking us up and i look forward to much more and you come back whenever there's more to talk about and uh and and who knows what the future holds exactly yeah yeah look forward to the future